Roy Manette is uh, standing in for Gary Johnson. And uh, this, uh, he's going to be a spokesperson for that candidate. Um, Roy, yes, the Libertarian Party candidate. That's correct. And uh, representing Petter Lindsay of PSL, the Party for Socialism and Liber Liberation, Walter Smolarek. I hope I got that right. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I have a name. I have a simple name that everybody must know. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Um, next, we have uh, for the Constitution <coughs> Party, the Jim Clymer for Virgil Good. And uh, then we have. Jocelyn Bowser Bostic. Uh, Jocelyn. 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 I, you know, I always get that wrong. I'm sorry. Jocelyn Bowser Bostic for Dr. Jill Stein, who is the Green Party candidate. And uh, the Socialist Worker Party candidate, Osborne Hart, is going to be represented by James Harris. And the Vote for Nobody campaign will be uh, represented by Jim Babb. So as I said, without further delay, let's start uh, introductory remarks, um, and let's uh, let the candidates speak for themselves. Thank you. Uh, my name is James Babb. I am not a candidate for any office, but I'm here to represent a very important campaign. Uh, I'd like to thank Bob Small and the other volunteers for inviting me. Uh, I think it's about time that somebody unplug democracy. The patient's been dead for a long time. <laughs> Nobody can end the wars abroad. Nobody can end the police state at home. Nobody will keep campaign promises. And most importantly, nobody has the right to rule you. So I'm voting for nobody. I think it's safe to say that everyone here has had it with establishment politics. You know the game is rigged. They use extreme measures to keep challenger parties off the ballot. They monopolize the debates whenever possible. The recent old party national convention showed us that even there, the elites have a scripted agenda. The, the assigned role of the people is merely to sanctify the power that these criminals have seized. The establishment mouthpieces even call it a civic duty to perform this ritual of the state religion. They want us to legitimize our own oppression by cheerfully participating in this rigged game. They even have the audacity, audacity to say that non-voters have no right to complain. Well, perhaps it's those that are willing to play the game that have no right to complain. They want us to declare things like, we are free because we vote, or we are the government. They use words like, we the people, to make us think that somehow we are the ones that are bombing children abroad, or we are the ones plundering trillions for the banking cartel. Their system relies on the consent of the governed. So I'm here today to offer the only solution that challenges their power, and that's to withhold consent, refuse to participate in their ridiculous ritual, and attack their illusion of legitimacy by voting for nobody. <laughs> While the other candidates here are very thoughtful and we, we all have certain things in common. The, the thing that I've noticed about them, these guys all have wonderful ideas about how the government should impose its will upon you guys. So the, the thing that makes me different is I believe that you should run your own life on all issues. Peaceful people should be allowed to do what they want and to be left alone and no one has the right to initiate force against anyone for any purpose at any time. Thank you. I think what you're asking for is the people in power to voluntarily give up their power. And that's not going to happen. I, I was involved with the Voters' Choice Act, I think it was at least since 2006. I've worked with Bob Small and others. It seemed like, you know, we, maybe we could do this. We could lay it out there, get support. But why would they possibly want to create a law that gives their challengers an advantage. It's just not going to happen. You know, the best the Voter Choice Act has gotten is a little bit of minority mumbling and an occasional mention in a hearing there, but I would be willing to bet money that this never, never will come to light. They're, gonna, they're clinging to their power. Not only are they going to hold on to what they have now, they're going to go for more. So to, to try to work within the system, I believe, is a flawed strategy. So uh, so you say, how are we going to do this? I say, it's impossible. 
let's instead of going through the system, let's go over the system, around the system, let's accomplish our goals without the politicians. Yes. Well, um, um, you know, we've heard some, some, some of the advertising material for our own government. You know, government's there to protect our rights. That's what they've been telling us for 200 years, okay? Well, guess what? It's not true. <coughs> government is force. It is nothing more. Government is violence. It's, it's used on the, for whoever wants to impose their will with guns, whether it's Gary Johnson's new sales tax or a government school. These things are enforced <coughs> at gunpoint. And if you doubt it, try not paying your tax. Try not paying a parking ticket. Eventually, if you resist sufficiently, they will kill you. This is what government is. Government is naked force. represents the people when the naked force. That's Again, the problem. It right, doesn't right. actually represent the people. That's part of right. They like they want you to think it represents the people. That's why they use these advertising phrases like we the people, but it's a hoax. Right. I think because the question too was much a part of it. The question though was what government should be. What is government supposed to be and not I don't think the question of what it is, but what should it be? What's well, what's the, the question? role of government? It was, what, in your opinion, is the definition of government? What role do you think it should play, and how does it enforce its policy? So it's both of those. It's all What role that. should it play? Yes. You're all making my point for me. Uh, I think what you're saying is, right, people have the power. Politicians do not lead. If, if you can Maybe you can pressure them into doing something at some time. But it's these actions on the street, real civil disobedience, real things taking place that are, that are much more effective. Eventually a politician might try to catch up with you. But, you know, and, and we, need, we do have lessons to learn about how the Vietnam War ended. Unfortunately, we are, uh, this government of this country has basically still been in continuous war since Vietnam. It hasn't really stopped. The, the, pr the principles are still there. The Pentagon is, is uh, budget is growing and growing and growing and growing. We might be able to s pull the troops out of here, but then they send them over there. So we need a fundamental shift inside to reject the entire system and focus on our own actions, like what people are doing uh, as individuals, not through the political process. And, and then you're going to see politicians scramble to catch up with us instead of try trying to pick some candidate that's going to implement the policies we want, we can force it to, into reality uh, by, by just educating one another. Actually, what I think of when I listen to you is when you say the vote for nobody campaign, what I see is going into the ballot box and having a write-in campaign that you put down the word nobody. How do you, otherwise, how do you let people know that you really are interested in a nobody campaign other than writing it in. How do people know about it? I, I learned tonight by being here, but how do you um, get that idea across to the larger population? Well, I think it's the same way that we talk about anti, any voting strategy. You know, I see people wearing these buttons that say, you know, I voted. Well, we can wear a button that says, I don't vote. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can talk about it with our coworkers, with our family. We can, we can make videos. It's, what's really important is really even not the vote totals that come into some government counting machine. What's really important is the change in here. And when we decide to reject this apparatus, it opens our mind to other possibilities. So that's where the real change is going to take place. Not because somebody notices, wait a minute, hey, you know, Jim Babb didn't vote, or he wrote in nobody. That doesn't matter. What matters is is the change that goes on in here. Does that make sense? It, it does. Um, it's a, the psychological idea that you're imparting tonight to me as the first guest uh, to listen to the alternative candidates. Uh, but I still am puzzled by the idea. I, I'm well educated and well aware of a lot of the beliefs and ideas of all the other representatives tonight trying to keep on top of uh, what our choices are, but I still don't get the idea of a vote for nobody campaign and um, how effective that would be uh, in, in social change. I'm still puzzled by the idea. Well, it's, to me, it's, it's about consent. And even the most tyrannical dictator requires the consent of the governed. There's only a, there's only a hundred thousand IRS agents. There's only, you know, hundreds of congressmen. 
but there's 330 million of us. So there's no reason that we need to be enslaved by them, <clears throat> except for what we're thinking, except for how we enforce the slavery on each other. So what I want to communicate is that we can break free. We don't have to participate in this system of oppression. We can maintain our dignity. It's like, uh, you know, a lot of times politics is sort of like a bully on the playground. <laughs> And they, they grab some kid's lunch and they, they want the kid to, to try to reach it and get it. They're like, give me the, you know, and they get this pleasure out of watching people fight over this lunch. What we can do is say, you know what, just keep it. You know, I'm going to walk away with my dignity and I'm not going to play this, this <clears throat> stupid game. Um, and that takes away their, their joy. Public education is what it says. Now and I agree with that. Give them a choice. Let, let them help to decide what kind of education well, they're supposed to not use force at all. No, I'd like to address this woman's concern. She has a very good concern that I think needs to be addressed. And, you know, if we're going to talk about competition and, and funding education without the use of violence, you, the question is, a very, it's a, well, what about people that can't afford it? Okay? This is a key question that must be addressed. And I, I think what we first have to understand is, okay, what usually makes cost of something go down? Okay? Does, something, does the cost of something go down when you only have a single provider? No. That uh, is a monopoly. You get poor quality, you get high cost. Okay, so first thing we have to do is say, well, look, we want to improve quality, we want to reduce cost, number one. That's going to mean choice for parents. We are in a golden age of technology, okay? A government school system is basically the same little red schoolhouse that it was, was when the government took over education. We have a golden age right now. We've got Khan Academy. We have the, the sum of human knowledge on our phones, for God's sakes, okay? To, to feel like we have to be <coughs> locked into this paradigm of forced government-controlled indoctrination. And, and Philadelphia is the perfect poster child for this. What a disaster. What a disaster. Yes. For, how can anybody look at this and say, well, we've got to maintain a forced monopoly. Uh, let's just uh, tweak it. No. We need, to, we need a radical new idea. And that idea is to put the children first. Let the parents be in control. Let people make choices. Let communities work together. You know what? The Philadelphia, Philadelphia school system says, oh, we've got to close a bunch of schools because we spent the money on prisons. Okay. Uh, you know what? Why can't all these teachers come together with the parents in those communities and take them over? Okay. The building is there. The teachers are there. There's a need for that product. Okay. But but just take away the guns. Take away the violence. Okay. And then, well, let's see what's available. We, people might want to go to school all year round. Might want to have school in the morning. Might want to have school on the weekends. Might want to have an online school. These are the possibilities when we open up our, our thought process to think outside of this terrible paradigm that we have now. Yes. So, Focus on eliminating the use of force on peaceful people. Let's try freedom for a change. Right on. Do you want to have a comment? Mm -hmm. Yes, one brief. The, the one thing I noticed is that there are certain areas that we agree on. I mean, we've got you know, radical socialists, conservatives, libertarians, anarchists, and I, I think it's safe to say that we're all against the, the military empire, right? And uh, the NDAA. And the NDNA, and probably many other issues, the Patriot Act, um, you know, we've got a lot in common. But despite the fact that we come from, all, from, the, from this different background, and, you know, and I just want to personally extend an invitation, I'll work with anybody on these things at any time. You know, we need a broad base. The corporatist parties are united for war and empire. You know, they, they have debates and they argue about who's the most bloodthirsty. Okay? At least we're going to discuss who's got the best ideas to shut this down. So I think that's, uh, that's very important to, just to note. Um, some people think that when, if you abandon the political process, you're giving up. And I think this could not be any more wrong. Uh, it's only giving up on a failed strategy, but it opens the door for infinite possibilities. So imagine that, that we're on a sinking cruise ship and, and, and you know, you, you know it's, it's sinking and, and the captain and the crew are busy trying to save the ship by doing a square dance. And you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what are you doing? You know? Well, you know, dancing is not going to save the ship. They said, well, we know that, but, you know, the ship's sinking. We've got to do something. You know, well, you don't even need to know how to save the ship 
to know that the first step is going to be to just knock it off with the dosey -si dough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least at that point, you can begin to look for the lifeboats. This this electoral system we have, it's like a lightning rod. It, that's been carefully constructed to absorb dissent and safely dissipate the energy while protecting the core structure. Okay, So this is why they want us to think that politics is the only path to change. It's because that's where they have reinforced defenses, ballot access restrictions, paid off media, convention rules, election laws, gerrymandering. It's all built to preserve the power of the establishment. So we need to step out of their prescribed system because that's what scares them. Civil disobedience, tax resistance, even just videotaping government employees is considered taboo. So we must say no at every opportunity, including election day. So I'm asking you to make a sane choice on election day. Nobody has the right to rule you. So on election day, withhold your consent and vote for nobody. Thank the uh, panel representatives for a uh, really, really terrific job of putting your positions forward and, and finding common ground and, and finding contrast between your views, too. I'd like to thank the audience, and I would encourage you to stay involved, and I'd also encourage you to get involved. Uh, Democracy Unplugged is an open organization. We'd love to have volunteers, love to have people um, send ideas our way for future events, future discussions. Uh, so please, if you are not on our mailing list, we have to do sign up, right and uh, please consider getting involved in, in, with our organization, because you can see what a great opportunity it is to bring so many ideas together and to give an opportunity for you to bring your ideas too. So thank you one and all once again. Thank you.